some of the most stunning photos I've seen are you in Lycra, um, yeah. halfway up a mountain in Mallorca. <laughs> Jason wondered where I was going with that, that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, it's John Lamerton here alongside my good friend and business partner, Mr. Jason Brockman. We are here for another episode of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast, where as always, it is our job to help you get more customers and make more money without just working harder. So without further ado, let's dive straight into this month's episode. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 99 of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast. It's the big one next month. We're all looking forward to that. But it's still March at the moment, and that can only mean one thing. Yep, the 1% doors are open for the first time in five months. Um, Jason, it doesn't feel like it's been five months, does it, since we last opened the doors to the 1% Club? No, not at all. It's uh, it's The time just really seems to be flying by, doesn't it? I don't know quite what it is. It's just... <laughs> You know, Blink, and it's another another group of lovely people to meet and to chat to and to find out all about and to, to work out a plan forward. Yeah, it's um, exciting. I love it. I love this time of year. It is. Um, it's it's a busy, busy time of year. Um, but it is, yeah, it's it's exciting. We do enjoy it. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about the 1% Club, head to the website, bigidea.co.uk and just click on the button that says 1% Club. Um really could be much more simpler than that um you could then be sitting exactly where today's guest is in anything from a couple of months to a couple of years time from now so today's guest is uh, roger haycock from roger's bakery which is a an artisan bread bakery supplying wholesale breads and pastries to cafes restaurants sorry my mouth is watering just as i'm saying this delis farm shops, hotels, and pubs. Um, Roger, welcome to the ALB podcast. Hello. Fantastic to have you. I, I looked at your website just as I was uh, taking that introduction, and uh, my mouth really was watering with almond pastries and uh, vegan croissants and all sorts of seeded breads and sourdoughs. And oh, it's a good job I've eaten before we've done this episode. That's all I'm saying. I'm not sure how we're going to get to the end of this episode, John. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll have a little break. We'll pause the recording halfway through, and I'll just go off and get a bit of toast. Right? Cool. Yeah. You didn't even mention the cakes. I didn't see photos of cakes. Oh, what cakes am I missing out on, Rog? Vegan ones, of course. <laughs> only, you... only, only ones I can sample. Okay. Okay, so almond croissants. I am so gutted. I have just discovered I've got an almond allergy. What is one of my favourite things in the world? Almond croissants. Oh, anyway. Uh, Roger, the reason that we wanted to get you on the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast today is a a post that you made in the 1% Club Facebook group a couple of months ago now, and it was for one of our Wednesday wins. So each Wednesday, we ask members to share what's gone well this week either in their business or with their lifestyle um this was i can tell you it was the 30th of december and this was your post it said uh today is 730 days that's two years since i had an alcoholic drink this is the foundation stone to my self and business development if i hadn't stopped drinking then i wouldn't have started reading I wouldn't have found John's book and the 1% Club, which eventually pushed me to have a holiday in the sun and grow my business with an actual plan. Um, You had something there about not putting butter in your coffee, but um, everybody knows that that is the secret to life is having butter in your coffee or ghee. If you're vegan, you can have, you know, dairy free options are available. (laughs) Very, very wrong. Can you, can you talk us through what, what that, moment was like that one decision that you made and did you at the time foresee where that was going to lead um it started off um well six months before it i got um i'd split up from my, my second wife and it was it was locked down i think at the time plenty of drinking and all sorts of things were going on um and 
I got a book or I started to set plan that I thought it's at this time that I've realized that I'm doing something wrong. So two marriages, etc. I need to look at things. And I discovered Audible, I think, at the time. I started looking at self-development books and what I could plan. And the first one was a book by Andy Ramage called Let's Do This, which mentioned, um, I think it was New Year's resolutions and how to plan and goal setting. So that was my initial book, which also mentioned about drinking. So my New Year's resolutions for that year well, the first one was to stop drinking. It was initially just for January. The second one was health. And the third thing was business. So it was one month at a time, one bit at a time. Um, yeah, the drinking, it was just easy. I just enjoyed not drinking. It gave me more focus. And whilst I had more time, I had more time to read. And then I started looking at business development books. And uh, yeah, there's something about routines, which Andy had mentioned many times yeah. in the morning. I was doing exercises and it fitted in. And um, yeah, it was quite an interesting. I think it was it was the audible version that I liked because you were chatting as well. So it was like getting familiar with the author. And at the end, you mentioned the One Percent Club. So just by luck, it happened to be a, an intake time. Ah, as it is book. this month. There we go. Yes. So was and, it routine uh, yeah. machine you found first or big ideas? It was routine machine. Ah, okay. Yeah, and then big ideas and then the rest. The rest is history. But yeah, so it was it was a planning. Uh, you emphasising what I'd learned before and doing one thing at a time. That's That was what set it up. Fantastic. I was going to ask you, actually, what did you go to the routine machine for? What was what was the uh, when you when you looked through all these self improvement but you saw routine machine and uh, read by pirates? What was the what was the uh, what was the, what was the reason of going? Actually, that's the one I'm going to select. It was well with the stopping drinking. That that was a that is literally the foundation to it because to stop drinking, you had to hijack the routine of getting a glass. Um, or going for a bottle of wine or coming home from work and being stressed and thinking, oh, time for a glass of wine. So it was hijacking that routine with another routine. Mm. So in my head at the time was thinking of what I could do with certain things. So I looked at cycling and nutrition, what I was eating, et cetera, things like that. And then this looking at business books and there it was, this word routine was in my face. So that's that's why I picked that one up. It's ah, oh, it's funny, isn't it? Because I, the reason I wrote Routine Machine was because I was on the book tour for Big Ideas. I was on a podcast, and the host said to me, "Oh, routines are really important to you. You're like the king of routine." Up until that moment, I didn't realise how important routines were to me. Um, and it's really interesting, Roger, when you said about like quitting drinking. Obviously, I did that. I did the same. Second uh, November, twenty thirteen, for me. Ten years coming up this year. Um, when you think about when I was drinking, it was very routine. It was six o'clock on a Friday night, close the laptop, open the bottle of wine. Um, Saturday, go to the football, have a few beers. Pizza, need to have a beer with the pizza. And it was these associations. It was these routines. It was yeah, literally the hardest thing I had to do was go to the pub with Jason and tell him that I wasn't going to drink because – well, that's what we did. We, you, know, you go to the pub on a Friday afternoon, you have a pint. Um, you know, as they say, you go to the Winchester, you wait for it all to blow over. Mm. Um, when you decide to make a big, big life-changing decision like that, and I know you said, obviously, it was only originally going to be for a month. When you see the benefits of that, you've still got to, you've still got to almost rip up those routines and change everything. And if, I think this is where people struggle to make change when they remove an ingrained routine and don't replace it with anything. I remember my my Saturday night um, bottle of wine for the first three months was replaced with a nice ice cold can of cherry Coke. Um, currently, I couldn't stand that. I, I could not drink 
a can of cherry coke um but that was the progression and it is this idea of that one decision being one little domino so yeah you know, jason said just now why did you pick routine machine and i in the back of my mind i'm going well i know why it's because that first book you read mentioned the power of routines so that word was swimming around your brain that routines are important when you happen to be on audible and you see a book that mentions routines suddenly your reticular activating system goes oh routines that's important isn't it perhaps we could learn a bit about that when you then read in the book about routines that the author also stopped drinking like, oh hang on there's something in this i know this and your brain just goes let me attach the thing I don't know to the thing I do know. And this is where I think any, and again, please, for anyone listening to the podcast and to yourself, Jason, please don't think we're telling you you have to quit the booze, okay? If you if you love to drink and it serves you, <laughs> Jason, you drunk now. <laughs> Honestly, we're not telling anybody to quit drinking this is not the the preachy ex-drinkers show um this is about making one decision that leads to another decision that leads to another decision and it's roger it's so it's so pleasing to hear you talk about right i'm going to sort out my drinking my health my business my relationships because that's almost exactly the what i did when i suddenly said right i'm going to i'm going to sort the business out right thank you google for kicking us in the balls back in 2012 so yeah 2012 we sorted the business out right what's next oh let's apply those same principles of constant never-ending improvement to my health i i spent years of trying to go to the gym trying to eat healthier trying to cut down on my drinking only to realize that none of this was working and what was the line you used earlier Roger? you said something about you know what i was doing wasn't working is that right um, I knew, yeah, it wasn't working because we'd divorced twice, put the brails. Yeah. yeah. was doing it wrong. So as I think Einstein says, isn't it, you know, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Um, a far more intelligent person wrote in Routine Machine that if you want different results, you need different routines. And if you make that one decision to change one routine, it probably won't stop there and yeah that's certainly for me it snowballed um the sort in the business led to sorting the drinking sort in the drinking led to juicing led to um intermittent fasting uh led to high intensity workouts i ran a 10k um for those on the watching the video version of this podcast there's a little um devon flag on my bookcase behind me that's actually my 10k medal which I ran a 10K on the one year anniversary of quitting drinking. Um, something I wouldn't have been capable of doing 12 months earlier. Um, when I made the decision to, and I didn't, again, I didn't decide to quit drinking. I decided to learn how to drink a little bit less. That was my decision. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something about my drinking. I had, had no intention of quitting. That then changed into quitting. But I didn't decide to drop three stone and run a 10K. That was decision number 14 of that year, which was almost like domino rally, where you make one decision, it leads to the next, and it leads to the next. So it's, it's interesting, Roger, because I'm obviously you sent over your bio earlier, and I didn't know you had such an interesting past. And... I can kind of see as we go back through your history that you've you've done this a few times. You've you've made a decision, whether that's a decision to re-educate yourself, to retrain, um, to to start again. Um, and you've done it again and again and again. So I, I wasn't going to mention this, but can we go back to your time with Calderdale Council? Uh, I, I never knew this was such an interesting part of your life, but I need to hear some of these stories. Uh, Happy Valley area, <laughs> currently, or was last month. Um, yeah, I, I got a. I, I, was, I did want to do architecture in college, um, which I quit because it wasn't about drawing. It was like law and things like that, and boring stuff. 
So I, um, yes, was living with my parents and my mum saw this job and it was only for one year. So I applied for a, a job and it was to go around all the council houses in Colwoodale in a tranny van with five other people, five or six other people, and have a look at what condition they were in. So there were various nice areas, including uh, opening doors to Rottweilers in your face, um, being held captive for a few hours in one area and forced to drink scrumpy out or you like this a scrumpy out of a, a stained teacup uh, there was being shot at i got shot at in a in a in the van one day and yeah there's instances like that i'm sure there's some some more we used to quite often oh there was a, an old lady uh, in hebden bridge because we all know hebden bridge now um that so was literally chucking pound notes on the fireplace, on the fire. Because at the time, she thought that if you had too much savings, that the government were going to take your house from you because you had too much. So oh, she was throwing her pension money onto the fire. Wow. Which we sorted out, and she was all taken to care, in, in care of. So that was all good in the end. But, yeah, it was, it was an interesting time, um, seeing the other side of life quite often on both sides. Why on earth were you shot at? Uh, because we were there, I think. <laughs> yeah, we were just sat in... It, it wasn't a very nice area. Um, and we were just sat in a van having having a brew. Things had been in the pub. And, uh, yeah, the windows started... It was only, I think, with an air rifle. It, nothing went too seriously, but uh, it was interesting. Amazing. Interesting. That sounds very, um, yeah, scary situation to be in, I guess. Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, there were, there were a few other instances which uh, aren't, aren't uh, appealing to talk about, but um, yes. <laughs> Who knew in 2023 it'd be uh, cheaper to be burning those notes on the fire now to keep warm than it is to actually use the gas? Probably would have been, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. So your, your evolution um, continued after the council. So um, you started uh, working for a conservatory roofing and double glazing company. You ended up running part of that business, um, supplying the UK, Europe and Chicago. Uh, you then set up your own uh, conservatory roof company, um, ended up selling your shares in that, um, setting up another cleaning and maintenance company, um, doing grass cutting for the local pubs, uh, being caretaker for your kids' primary school, doing uh, what else got here? double glazing unit replacement service. Um, yeah. You're also a bookkeeper and payroll for your brother's engineer or your brother-in-law's engineering company. Um, you've had a busy life. Are you Mr. Ben in another life? <laughs> well, I like to use my hands. I like to see how things work. I like to take. I used to like to take the television apart when I was a kid, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But yeah, and um, the conservatory maintenance company happened. Um, that was set up whilst I was in hospital with food poisoning. It was the the consultant that came to see me. Um, we ended up talking about conservatories, and his was a mess and whatever else. And I sort of offered that I could go around, and and then that one thing led to another, and other people came. So that's how that one started. Fantastic. So again, you made you made one decision, which was to eat something you probably shouldn't have eaten, <laughs> and that led to you starting a conservatory company. Well, somebody has to do it. Yeah, that, I, I love that, Roger. That it's just this this whole thing of that you never know where your next decision, nope. your next meal, <laughs> is going to take you. Uh, what was the meal that ended you in landed you in hospital with food poisoning? Um, it was chicken pate. Um, I was on. I'd sold a business and we'd gone to Wales on holiday, and I bought some chicken pate that I fancied having some toast from a a local supermarket. I won't mention. And um, I got Campylobacter. I think it was. Wow, which was pretty nasty. Um, yeah, so that that landed me in hospital for a couple of months because it led to another another thing that I get. But yes. Wow. So did your seed money for this conservatory company, did that come from the supermarket's compensation? No, no, no. <laughs> um, I don't know things like that. Um, 
No, it was, it was um, I only needed a van. You know, a bit of Del Boy there. But um, yeah, a little bit a van, wheel a van and a ladder. Yeah. That's all I needed. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's funny, I've been writing about Neville Wright recently. Um, of course, yeah. How did Neville start? He borrowed his dad's ladder, uh, got himself a 37 pence piece of cloth and a bucket. And there you go. He's up and running. He's in business. Yeah. Uh, that one decision, by the way, um, I think the decision he said was that he would never, ever work for the man again. Um, he was in the Dole office in 1974 and said, you know, you're not going to get any money. Um, and he said, I'm, that's it. I'm going to work for myself. Dad, can I borrow your ladder? Uh, I'm going to buy a piece of cloth. Anyone want their windows washed? That one decision is why Neville now has a business empire of more than a hundred million pounds. Um, something you mentioned in passing there, Roger, you said you like to take things apart and see how they work. Yes. Are you doing that with yourself now, with your own personal development journey? Well, I mean, that's deep, isn't it? Mm. Um, <laughs> Paxman, stand aside. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So where where have you where where do you start? If someone not for you, not you know, I don't need to go too deep into yourself here, but if someone's listening to this and they wanted to take themselves apart, look at all the con- t- constituent parts and then improve things, put them back together, and hopefully when they put them back together, they'll work again. <laughs> what what would you advise them to do? Um well, I started off by books. It was from the books that I came across giving up drinking, which led to routines, led to nutrition. And I think it's just a progression from each one of those that mm. sort of starts to make me think about how your mind works. And you come across, oh, um, it's just your thought process, how, you, how your mind works. And this impulsive decisions there's the uh, a book the chimp paradox oh yeah dr steve peters sort of thing. um yeah and it's understanding that how, you, how your mind works in certain circumstances mm. um yeah so it was a course i went on that was only initially a month course that I quite enjoyed and i wanted to learn more about the, uh, the way that we live which is yeah which has led me into hugging trees but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> and one you nicely led us into. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I'm still on that journey. Um, one of the lessons was um, our third adventure. Mm-hmm. So I I take it on board that my first adventure was youth, being a teenager, getting a job. Second adventure was marriage because it's all expected. And now, after all that's been done with my business and whatever else, I'm on my third one. Mm. And it's how I shape my third adventure, which yeah. is the way I'm looking at it. Life is a choose your own adventure book. And if you remember them from kids, you'd get to the end of page 14 and it would say, do you want to venture into the cave or do you want to cross the bridge? And one is turned to page 28 and one is turned to page 35. And whichever path you choose is different. But then on those two respective pages, you've got a choice to make at the end of those. And it's that, it is that winding, meandering pathway. Um, and I think, certainly for me, and I think I'm gleaning this from you, Roger, is it's almost a sense of curiosity as to what else could I improve? What happened? Yeah, imagine taking the transistor apart and going, what happens if I replace this part? Hmm. Could I make this work better? What This bit here, what does that do? And what happens if I make it longer, make it shorter? Um, and it's a little bit like that with personal development. We talked a little bit today, obviously, about health, um, fitness, um business there's so many areas you can go on this um mindset um you know uh, anger um self-talk 
um, personal finance, relationships, parenting, uh, you know, looking at you know, your own relationship with significant others um, and your place in the world, your purpose in the world. Um, now, obviously, you say you've, you've discovered or embraced veganism. Now, that's, again, an area of personal development because you've changed yourself i'm presuming you you haven't been a lifelong vegan no can we have it on record that i didn't mention i was vegan it was you that mentioned it (laughs) how do you know that someone is a vegan don't worry they'll tell you yet we know (laughs) yeah but again that that is an area that you've improved your life by studying just seeing almost and i've i've toyed with this a little bit i'm not fully vegan myself but i do eat considerably more vegetarian and vegan lifestyle than i used to even three four years ago it's that curiosity of what happens if i change my diet what happens it's no different to a a car is it and just saying well what happens if i put different fuel in so what what's happened to you since you put different fuel in you a bad example john it tends to break if you put the wrong fuel in no you can't read diesel and it's cheaper (laughs) okay (laughs) um well i started i've only been i went veggie first Mm -hmm. so i gave up the drinking and i um i was looking at my diet and things so i ended up buying buying from uh hello fresh oh yeah yeah that because i looked at the cost of it and it was just Things would go off if I made anything. Um, I used to like doing roasts for the kids, etc., which I can't do when you're on your own. So I, I was started off with that, but you tend to find that the meat didn't last for a week, so I get once a week. So I went, I thought, well, I'll go veggie. veggie. I quite like all this stuff, lot like curries and things like that. So uh, that was great. Um, and then it was last year, last January, I thought, I'll give it a go, because the only thing I'm doing is eating a bit of cheese. Uh, and the odd egg. I, d- I don't do dairy or anything, else, any other dairy. Um, yeah, and it's, I like the challenge and I'll, I don't like to eat the same thing twice. Yeah. So I like to experiment with things as in with business. So I, currently I'm just enjoying eating lots of different things. Fantastic. I think personally, you said you like a challenge. If I was to go without cheese, that, that for me would be i've done some challenges i've done skydiving i've fought in a boxing match bring that on over not having any cheese oh, a nice cheese on toast oh come on a nice slice of your sourdough with some nice like brown bubbling cheese on top a little bit of marmite spread on top of that oh come on well that's fine um well i added when i had the deli um I used to, I, the reason I got the deli is because I wanted a cheese shop. <laughs> and that was my, so I got a fridge and I started chopping, uh, stocking cheese. Yeah. And I, I had several hundred varieties of cheese. So I've sampled hundreds and hundreds of different types of cheese. So I don't, I don't actually need, when I, when I sold the shop, I discovered that I didn't like a block of cheese. It was like a little shaving that would give somebody a sample. Mm. So I, I only needed a little bit, and to be honest, vegan soft cheese is fine. It does it does the job. The rest of the stuff is shocking, but, but yes, <laughs> perhaps that's something you can say. Now you've mentioned just there. Oh, when, when I had a deli, yeah, because you've had a deli. Uh, started off as life as a greengrocer's, just yeah. to go further down the rabbit hole of kind of constant, never ending uh, evolution. Um, you you said you fancied having to go at making cheese. That didn't work out. That is the decision that led you to. I wonder if I can make bread. Mm. So how how did that go in the in the early days? the The problem with the cheese was it takes too long to find out if it's any good. Mm-hmm. So if you want to make a, a nice mature cheddar, you've got to wait at least three to six months. Okay, and then when you sample it, see what it's like in anticipation, and then you can't even you spit it out. It's disgusting. Oh no! And you start again. So I thought, no, this is, this takes too long. Um, we had a bread supplier making fancy bread, and 
you know, you sit there looking at them, making it, and you're thinking, I could do that. So, a bit like yourself, I didn't know how to do it, but I got a book, watched a bit of YouTube, and had a go. I love it. Uh, how many businesses, and I know, Jace, you'll agree, many of ours have started with those famous words, I could do that. How hard, how hard can... can it be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it wasn't the 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 bread breakthrough was when my oven caught on fire. That's, <laughs> that's, that's when it happened. So I was what well, the plan was that you I'd go to market, get my get my fruit and veg, come back, um, sort the bread out so it'd be rising, put the fruit and veg away, the door would have risen enough, my oven would go on. I'd put the bread in the oven, do me some paperwork, and then suddenly the electrics went off and there was smoke coming through the kitchen. Um, so I thought, oh, bugger. So I just left it because I didn't know if it was a Friday. It was a long day. Um, I did some stuff, and about 10 minutes later, I thought, oh, let's see what this mess is like. Went to look in the oven, and it was the most stunning loaves <laughs> I'd ever seen. They fully <laughs> bloomed it on everything. So it was at that point I had to think, why? Why has that never happened before? The fact that it has to set fire and have flames coming out the back, that it worked. So I knew that. Grilled I'm, bread. I'm not going to let that secret out. <laughs> <laughs> but it was from that point that things changed. Okay, I think we need to add a disclaimer now to any listeners who try and replicate this at home and set fire to their houses. Um, do not try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's how that started, and then I I used to do it for the shop, and then I had some trade customers, and green grocery is the hardest job I would say anybody could ever do. Wow, I'd not recommend it. It is horrendous. <laughs> Are you, do you just spend most of your day throwing out rotten and veg? You you can do one day you can have. Everybody buys one thing because it's fantastic. You buy the same thing the following day, nobody touches it. Oh. So it's it's a very hard thing to do. Mm. Um, so, yes, so we started doing that and then sold that business because bread was more interesting, to be honest. And then with one customer I think I had, um, I set up the wholesale business. There's a lot more dough in bread, isn't there? Oh, come on. <laughs> At least you haven't said cook yet. That <laughs> That's my job. Hang on. It is. <laughs> Number of times I get a funny look at me when I've said yeah. something like cooks the bread or or whatever it might be. Yeah, I do get a funny look from Roger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was how I got into the bread. So if anybody wants to do it, you need to get a book called How to Make Bread by Emmanuel Haji Andrew. Oh, there we there go. go. I love the fact that so many of so many of these journeys here, Roger, have started with a book that almost convinced you that something is possible. Because you know, from a pure sort of layman here, I would say I, I couldn't do that. But actually, I reckon if I read that book, my confidence would be a little bit higher that well, maybe I could. If I go further down that rabbit hole and take the next decision to kind of see where that leads. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of it comes from when I had the conservatory business, um, my sort of role was systems and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of dabbling in code uh, and getting the information that required from the, the manufacturer's software. But it was how, how to make things and put things together in the easiest way, which is the same with bread. So it's just manufacturing. So it's just looking at those principles and applying it to to bread. Just add fire. That's <laughs> that is definitely the secret. Oh dear, um, Roger, you've um, you've kind of no we've noticed you in the in the one percent crop group. Um, quite often, you enjoy your bike rides, don't you? And I think some of the most some of the most stunning photos I've seen are you in Lycra, um, <laughs> halfway up a mountain in Mallorca. <laughs> Jason wondered where I was going with that, that statement. Box of baguettes from bread, then, but who knows? <laughs> so again, I'm keen to reverse engineer that. What led you 
up that mountain doing a 100 mile bike ride uh, well um first divorce lose weight go on a bike get fit try second wife second divorce lose weight get fit go on a bike not attract a third wife I tell you um no i part of my routine became um in, in lockdown was to do the work improve your business and then at the same time every day as soon as i finished work um i'd got my bike which eventually went on to zwift so i could do the training and because it was a routine at the end of each day i need a bell there you go you don't mind <laughs> um, your bell doesn't work because the zoom cuts it out <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes so I, I was doing that and i yeah, so I started enjoying the cycle and waiting for summer. Um, but what I also did was, with stopping drinking, I I don't know where I got this from. I might have been, I think it was a uh, one of the investment books. I started to put some money away into a space. So the the money that I was drinking, not all of it, but some of that, I put into a a special fund of which I could treat myself to. So um, as that built up, I bought a new bike. Etc. And eventually, that's what paid for my holiday. So that's my fun money. So I turned drinking and you know hangovers the following day into actual fun. So yes, you do need to stop drinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. but yeah, so Mallorca, I was going to go on a holiday with somebody else, but that sort of fell through. And I thought, well, I, um. John's going to give me some real stick because I did say I was going to have a summer holiday this year. Yeah, but I did say a beach. By the sea, well, I think you said. Yeah, it was, well, it was close. There were always some sea shots there. <laughs> um, so I thought, yeah, just book it. So I've never done it on, on my own before, but, you know, why not? So it's an adventure, think, isn't it? It is an adventure, and there's plenty of people at um, holiday companies that do bike rides for you. So I've got a nice bike. An upgrade on what I have and picked some routes on Strava and off I went. And 100 miles in the sun is not far. Do you stop at every bar on the way? For a sparkling water, of course. Sparkling water, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the diet was an issue in Spain. That was that was more awkward. But um, drinking is fine. Plenty of water. Agua. Yeah. Yeah. Agua con gas. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know where this, this year's holiday is going to be, but um, now I know I can do that. That's fine. Just need more days off during the week. Is, is that the one thing? So obviously you read the routine machine and then you come and join us in the 1% club. Was was I mean, we've had lots of conversations and, and that getting some time off during the week is, is definitely one of those early early wins that we we, we managed yeah. to, to look through wasn't it but was that the routine that you wanted to get into your business and why you joined the one percent club um this is towards my answer at the end of this um i haven't got there yet hang on next, next question <laughs> <laughs> so yes yes it was is the answer to that um the lifestyle bit is what i determined was I was getting wrong with the two divorces and everything else is that I was working hard doing everything else, but there was no life involved, which caused other issues. So yes, lifestyle was a major thing. So what, what, what does that ambitious lifestyle business mean to you then? It means if I could ever get there, it was me. Um, I am not, I don't have a goal to be a multi-millionaire and be mega successful. Um, I want a lifestyle um, that gives me time away from the business, but also it provides for me a lifestyle that I want to live. There you go, in a nutshell. Nice. You've been practising that, haven't you? No, that's that's <laughs> literally just sort of... <laughs> I've been thinking about it for a week, but yeah. Lovely. Well, hopefully, we're going to help you get there. That's uh, already found you some Tuesday afternoons, but you've moved that, haven't you? I've moved Tuesdays, um, starting at the end of February, mm -hmm. March, whenever it is. Um, 
Mondays. Mondays is the new Tuesday. Mondays is all a new Tuesday. <laughs> so that means I'll have Sunday and Monday off instead of a Sunday and a Tuesday. So that's two consecutive days. Oh, is that like an overnight cycle somewhere? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Saturday night. And so that's, oh, that's almost three days. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. It's almost a trip to Plymouth. Nearly. I was taking that long to get here, might it? <laughs> You're right coming here because that's downhill, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I, I really like that, Roger. It's um, time out of the business, but also the financial ability to take time out of the business. Um, and it is almost that sort of ambition and lifestyle at polar ends of the pendulum. Sometimes you need ambition, sometimes you need lifestyle. And I think if you go too far down either route, you're going to be in trouble. And it is, I don't want to say balance because that's over cliched, I believe. Um, but there is, there is a, I don't want to say balance. What can I say instead of balance? The swing. <laughs> no, no, not to be swinging. <laughs> oh my God. We've had enough Lycra instances today. <laughs> oh dear. Striking the right insert synonym for balance here between ambition and lifestyle. Yes. That's all that you can say to that, isn't it? Yeah. And with that, I think we should sign off for this episode. That's all I'm going to run out of synonyms. <laughs> you can tell I'm doing editing for my book at the moment when I just, my most common Google thing at the moment is word plus synonym, but I need another word for this. <laughs> uh, by the way, that's coming out later this year, guys. Don't forget. The False Exit, not a DCI Lamerton novel, uh, but it is the fourth business book from myself uh, about removing yourself as the godlike genius through which everything must flow in your business, uh, keeping the good golden goose, not killing the golden goose, but instead turning your business into a golden goose, golden egg collecting machine. Um, vegan golden eggs are available um, for the tree huggers amongst us. <laughs> Roger, have we have we convinced you to start drinking again yet? <laughs> Never. Oh, good. <laughs> You'd be pleased to hear you haven't convinced me not to start. Uh, not drinking. We can work on that. Okay. <laughs> oh, Thanks yeah. so much, Roger. You've been brilliant. Take care, everybody. See you on the next uh, podcast. See you later. Bye-bye. So there we are, another episode in the can. Um, how was it for you? Please let us know. Um, how do you listen to these podcasts? Um, please leave a review on that platform. Let us know what we can do better, what you like, what you don't like, and how we can improve to make this show even better for you. We'll see you next time.